Well, in Windows Server 2008 Hyper-V, you can have virtual LANs. And these virtual LANs can be between the virtual machines and the host machine. They can be just between the virtual machines, so even the host machine can't talk to them. Or if you want to, you can actually go through and set up your virtual LANs so that you're connected to the network adapter and you can go ahead and communicate out in the environment. And this is where we talk about our virtual network. So let's go ahead and go back into here. In fact, I'll make myself a little bit larger. Let's go in and get into the virtual network manager. Now I have a, 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 vir, a VLAN already set up. You know, here's my local area connection. It is set up to a Microsoft virtual switch. And I can do external, like I have uh, set right, right on this system. Here's my external going right to my network adapter. I can say, let's go ahead and allow the managing operating system to share this network adapter. So in some cases, what you may want to do is you may want to go through and uh, do something like um, have uh, multiple network adapters. So that you have one network adapter that allows your, your virtual machines to communicate and another network adapter that lets the operating system work. Now it used to be that if you had a Microsoft machine and you had two network adapters in the same machine plugged into the same network, holy moly, NetBIOS freaked out because it says, well, my NetBIOS name is this and the other one said, my NetBIOS name is that and they end up running into each other. Well, you can not have that problem by plugging in multiple machines, but what you do need to do is turn off NetBIOS Server TCP. That's a NetBT, and uh, what that does is it gets rid of those NetBIOS broadcasts, and you're not going to have to worry. Uh, just make sure that your NetBIOS applications are going to operate when you do that. Um, I can set up my network so that it's internal only, which means that uh, this is going to allow my host and my virtual machines to be able to communicate with each other. So, I'm sorry, internal only means that it's going to allow my virtual machines to communicate with each other. It's not going to be able to communicate, oh, that's right, with the host. The virtual machines and the host can talk to each other, but they're not going to be able to communicate. The virtual machines cannot communicate out to the regular network. A private virtual machine network, that's the one where it's just the virtual machines. Let's say, for example, that I have a couple of machines, I'm in a testing environment. Uh, maybe I'm having one machine be an attacker and the other machine is going to be the firewall or it's scanning this or it's doing that. And I don't want any of those packets to go out. I can have them be running into each other. Okay, well, if the host machine can't talk to them, how am I going to be able to run this? Well, you can still connect to them using the virtual network manager. And as far as the computer is concerned, the virtual computer, when you're talking to it via the virtual network manager, it's like you're actually sitting there. It's not a remote desktop session. It's like you control, delete, set down at the console, and you are logged into that particular machine. So, I mean, it does allow you to go through and still communicate. It's just you can't communicate via the network. So now let's go ahead, and I'm going to cancel my changes here. And I'm going to create a brand new virtual network. And we have external, internal, and private. Now, what are the differences here? External means that we can talk out the, uh, the network adapter. So it's just like everybody's on the same network adapter. Internal means that we can talk to the physical computer and we can talk virtual machine to virtual machine. And then private means virtual machine only. So I'll say add. And now we have this new virtual network. What do you want to call it? We're going to go ahead and we're going to call it uh, internal testing only, no outside. And then I can put little notes in here like call Doug at 555-1212 to change this. And even though I said initially that it's going to be internal only, private, I can go ahead and change this as well if I need to. Um, if I am going to go with external, I can say enable a virtual LAN identifier so I can change a VLAN ID. Why would I need to do that? Well, it's all about our switches. You know, if my switches are, are saying, hey, you're in VLAN 2 or in VLAN 3 or in VLAN 4 or something like that, I can go through and I can set that up. Now, it's not really going to affect the virtual machine network. But this is if I'm going to go through and I have a VLAN 
management system and I want to be able to share out that information. It, it makes it very much uh, uh, very easy for me. And this is over on page 327. Uh, if I've already physically broken up my network using switches and VLANs, sometimes my management will need a VLAN ID to be able to pull all that stuff out. All right. Um, bum, bum, bum. Oh, and by the way, um, if I say that I'm going to do external and I'm not going to do the VLAN, I'm just going to do an external. They talk about this on page 328. Because of the hypervisor and the way that the stuff is set up, it's going to be a very efficient communication path with the network adapter. It's not like the old days where we had to emulate everything and hopefully it worked and sometimes it got stuck and all that. We're actually going to be talking to the network adapter pretty much directly. So it makes it very, very, uh, very, very easy for us to set up. Now, if, uh, here's a big point though. If we are going to go through and set this up so it has external access, it's just like any other machine, which means you're going to need to go in and set up things like DHCP or a static IP address. It also has to deal with all the route rules. If you have hygiene components on your environment that says, oh, we're not going to let you communicate if you don't have certain service packs. When these are connected to the external environment, they're connected to the external environment. So all the rules and regulations that you've set up for your computer communications are still in effect. So very, very important that you understand how this works. Now, we've had people chatting, yeah, I use VLANs with Cisco switches all the time. Um, take our ICND class. We show you how to set up uh, virtual air, local area networks. We also show you how to do things like spanning tree protocol, um, all the great stuff that's out there. So if you do want to learn a little bit more about some of these networking technologies, it's a good idea to, to be familiar with that.